Hi, welcome back. My name is Ken Hughes. This episode is about the next frontier of customer experience. And for me, I think that's about using technology to scale reach of customer experience and also to increase the depth of connection. I want to talk about those two things today. And the inspiration from this actually came from me helping my daughter with her high school maths. Uh, she was doing line equations and quadratic equations and I was helping her. And when I say helping, I mean doing that thing that parents do that nostalgically roll up our sleeves and take over. <laughs> but I was looking at it and I became fascinated by how this under understanding of, of just dimensions can help us in our customer experience work. So I'm going to bring you all back to maths class. Are you ready? Let's go! And boom, here we are. Now, welcome to maths class. Why do I own a shooter's gown? Let's not ask any questions. And in fact, these are my son's glasses. I can't even see with these. They're too strong. <laughs> okay, welcome back to maths class. What are we going to do first? Okay, the first thing we start with is what is known in terms of lines as a single point. This is what we call the zero dimension. So if you were in the zero dimension, you'd just be a dot, an insignificant dot, no height, no width, no depth, just literally a single dot. Uh, in terms of customer and business experience, what happens when you're in the zero dimension is that you are a customer, but you can't find the product or service that you want. So actually before e-commerce, often when we had customer needs and wants, and we didn't know where that product was or what store would sell it, we were kind of lost in a zero dimension. Similarly, if you start a business and you don't get good at customer experience and marketing and connections, your business is there, your store is there, but no one's coming in the door. They don't even know you exist. You are in the zero dimension. So it's a place where customers and businesses don't connect. They kind of miss each other. And so no business ever wants to be, of course, in the zero dimension, not a good place to be. The next thing in terms of geometry is a line. And a line is the connection of two points. There we go, we, it's very simple. And it's what we call the first dimension, one dimensional. So one dimensional life is when you have two points and they're connected in a line. And again, in terms of branding, that was when we had a customer and a brand and they connected in one point and we usually called that a physical store. So one dimensional retailing, for instance, existed for thousands and thousands of years. In a village, in a city, in a town, there would be a market square. Traders would come and set up their stall. They would come to the square, customers would come to the square, and that's where the interaction and transactions happened. It was a model of retailing that existed for thousands of years until probably really this century, until e-commerce took over and challenged that. But what's, what's what we call one-dimensional retailing. It's very efficient because actually the customer just goes along this line to the store, the brand ships their product to the store, and all the transactions happen in the middle. It's actually really, really efficient. Now, that's one-dimensional retailing, and if that was a video game, it would be like Atari's Pong, you know? <laughs> just boom, boom, boom. And so it was efficient and simple, but obviously things got more complex. The next level up from one dimension is two dimension, and two dimensions is when you have, not only do you have length, but you also have width. So here we have a square, and a square would be a two-dimensional shape. Um, and so in two dimensions, you still have the customer here, and you still have the brand, but now they can connect via two options. They can connect via a physical store or they could connect via online. So now you've got two channels to manage. So as a brand, you've got to be able to manage your, your online channel the same way as your physical store. As a customer, you have options. You can go online, click and collect, or you can go to a physical store. So it got a little bit more complicated and it's where we are today actually. A lot of brands and businesses are still in two-dimensional retailing. They're trying to manage both channels. They have an omni-channel strategy. It gets a little bit annoying because sometimes the customer goes into a store and they are maybe known by the sales associate, but then the system doesn't know them online. And, you know, it gets a bit weird. But two dimensions, it's again quite simple. And again, if this was a video game, it's Pac-Man. Pac-Man was a two-dimensional game. Better than Atari's Pong, but, you know, it wasn't exactly complicated. Now, the challenge here is as we push into 3D. So a 3D shape, as you all know, would be the square, except now it's a cube. Um, and so a 3D shape still has our customer and the brand, but instead of this two-dimensional space where they had just a physical store and online, we now have so many options and nodes. So we have maybe in-app, swipe up social media shopping. Maybe we have using a metaverse virtual environment. Maybe we have third-party reseller, our own brand, online store. And so there's so many options, pop-up store, physical store, that the nodes of potential connection have deepened. And I think one of the problems with a lot of 
customer experience work I do with brands is that they're still stuck in a two-dimensional space where they should be operating in a three-dimensional space. And let's face it, we've moved on in terms of society from 2D into 3D. If you look at the games that we used to play, the Sonic, uh, the Hedgehog, the Super Mario, we played in 2D and now they're very much in 3D. The games uh, people play today, Fortnite, Call of Duty, all very much 3D. And so we need to be in our customers' lives in a 3D way as well. We need to be more present and we need to operate across all these various nodes of connection. And that's what I talk about when I talk about scale. Now that's from zero dimension to one to two to three, 3D. And most people stop there, but there is of course a fourth dimension. Now, what people, some people argue that time is the fourth dimension. Um, and other people in terms of spatially argue that the fourth dimension is a shape and it is a shape and you're going to learn a new word today in maths class called a tesseract. I'm going to try and draw one really quickly. It's a cube that overlaps with other cubes. So you keep layering cubes onto other cubes. In fact, it'll be easier to show you on screen. Here you go. That's a tesseract. And a tesseract is basically overlapping cubes. And as we push into metaverse and as we put into virtual environments, you're going to see from a branding point of view that the ability to connect with consumers is going to grow at scale. So not only are you going to have three or four or five or six or seven potential nodes of connection, you're going to have 14, 21. They're going to keep multiplying as new virtual environments and new ways of reaching customers open up new channels, new opportunities. And so really we're heading into a fourth dimension of consumer connection, a layered way of connecting with consumers. And that brings scale of opportunity, but only to the brands that are ready for it to roll up their sleeves and connect in this way. Now, I did talk about two things I wanted to cover today, which was one was the scale of connection, which is this model, this 4D model. How can we push into 3D and 4D away from 2D? But also it's about depth of connection. So one thing I'm noticing, particularly post pandemic, is that customers are craving authenticity and real connections with the brands they buy. They're looking to connect with shared values and shared purpose and shared meaning. And so if we want to start connecting at scale, which we are going to be able to do with technology, we also have to work on the depth piece. And this one, if we're going to use another analogy, is like working a Rubik's Cube. So working one face of the Rubik's Cube is amazing. So if I solve this Rubik's Cube really quickly, look, oh, amazing. Uh, just working one face is what we're doing right now in customer experience and marketing in terms of depth. So we're interacting with our consumers, we're using their data. Their data might tell us who they are, where they are, what they're buying, what they bought last. But we don't really then activate that data in any way that makes them feel anything. So we're really only working one face of the potential connection with our consumer, with the data we have, with the personalization strategies that we have. The question, the challenge for you as a business and brand owner is how we can start using the bulk of this cube. Not just using the nine squares here, but using the 54 squares on the cube to really connect with the customer, to solve the entire thing for them and to make them feel special. That's what we talk about when we talk about depth of connection. How can we actually reach into every customer's lives and make them feel special, make them feel something. Once you make a customer feel something, that's the beginning of brand loyalty and customer lifetime value being built. Now, the question I get often is, well, how do you do that at scale using digital technology and how do you make people feel things and connect in a real way? It's actually sometimes quite simple. It sounds complex, but it's not. It's just about creativity and how you can connect with purpose and meaning. So let me give you a really simple example. I'm a blood donor. Uh, I enjoy giving blood because it's only like most populations, if you look across the world, only 3% of the population give blood, which is really small. So it's an important job. Every time I give blood, and have a busy schedule, you've got to fit it in. And a lot of the challenge with donor retention is trying to make people come back again and again and again. Interestingly, two or three weeks later, after every blood donation I give, I get an SMS text message. So it's not complicated technology, very simple technology, from the transfusion board telling me where my blood was used and why. So the last donation I gave went onto a cancer ward. The donation before that went for post-op transfusion, post-surgery. And I know the hospitals it went in geographically. And so it gives me as a donor a little bit of kind of a reward, I guess. I feel special. I feel I know that my blood was used today to help someone in the cancer ward. And that makes me come back and donate blood again. So there is a great example of using technology at scale because that SMS system goes out to thousands and thousands of people every day. Uh, but also makes me feel it's a depth of connection. It's not just thanks for your blood, see you next time. It's here's how it's used, here's no, obviously not exactly who it was used with, that would be a privacy breach. But it, it makes me closer to the person who got that donation. And so from a customer point of view, what we need to do is look at how we can reach into their lives with depth and meaning using technology at scale. Because once we do that, that's really the foundation of customer lifetime and brand value. So there was your maths lesson for today. 
push into the 3D, 4D dimensions in terms of e-commerce strategy, customer experience, that's the next frontier, scale and depth together. Really important as we push into metaverse, as we push into this world that's going to get more and more digitally immersive, we have to learn how to scale and how to deepen customer connections using technology and using those connections with customers. Until next time, I think until next class, enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy your break, and I'll see you for the exam on Friday. Bye-bye.